every single time I try and do something, I can never find everything that I need. It's always walking around, walking around, walking around, looking for one tool. Where did I put it when I got done last time? Because it seems more often than not, I get done doing something at the end of the day, and I'm in a hurry, and I set it down where it's convenient instead of where it's supposed to be. This is not supposed to be out here, but here it is. So with the fence, I'm gonna take this T-post out and we're gonna put wood in. So before on our fence, as we're trying to make it bigger now, we use these T-posts that have the brackets and they go down to the angle and it's done a good job. It's kept the fence up, but we never really pulled it tight. We're gonna try and pull it tight this time. And the more I got to thinking, the more I figured it might be better if we had some wooden posts. We'll do some H-frames in the corners and H-frames at the gate. Never made an H-frame before, so we'll see how this one goes. They're only seven foot long stakes. I've got some wind stakes. I'm gonna char the ends of them. And then I've got a auger bit that's gonna go on the end of my drill right here. This will only get me 24 inches deep. On that seven foot post, I'm aiming for about 33 inches in the ground. So I don't know how I'm gonna get a little bit deeper than that. I tried to put an extension on that auger bit to get me a little bit deeper in the ground and the attachment doesn't fit. It's not a quarter, it's not five sixteenths, it's not metric, I can't figure it out. So what I'm thinking we're gonna do is get it in the ground as deep as we can and then we will use our gas powered T-post driver on top of the wooden post. I don't know, we got a whole lot of things going on here. We're just gonna try it and see what happens. Next time I'll check and make sure the propane tank's not empty first. So we're gonna char these ends. Try and give a little bit more weather protection. We're treated for ground contact, but we're gonna show them anyways. It's close to 100 degrees today. I'm glad we decided to use wood. Now the experiment begins. About 25 inches. Not enough. We're looking for 32. Plus our hole is not big enough for this diameter. We're gonna have to cut them. Our H, our horizontal is not gonna be seven feet across because we've got pointy ends and we've got tapered ends. So I think I'm gonna cut them down to six feet just because it's a nice easy round number. So we'll put our next one six feet away from it. Next one over there, six feet away from it. And then we'll work on our, our crossbars on the H. Six feet. When I was an electrician, I had to do this on top of a ladder. The journeyman were standing around laughing at me. I was the apprentice. I was up on the eight foot ladder. I had a real long one on, yanked me off the ladder. <laughs> All right. 24 inches. Sweet. Wasn't sure if that board would take the hitting from the sledge or not, but why don't you get that, um, yeah, it's crooked. Get that, uh, two by four. I wanted to swing the sledgehammer for real, but I don't want to break the board. <laughs> you want my gloves? Back. You are at That's good. six. <sighs> That was fun. 
This will serve as a nail for us. I would prefer to use some six inch screws, but I don't have any six inch screws right now. I do have some three eighths rebar, so that's gonna be a makeshift nail. Uh, let me go get my skill saw. That is why we measure twice and cut once. Is it level? Okay. You like it? It's just so low. Okay. Is it setting down on it now? If you let it go, it's still yep. level. Good job, babe. Thank you, T Post. Nope. Very important to use the right tool for the job, Ben. This chicken's making all that racket for her. Break on through to the other side. There it is. Now you can tie up your horses, you can lean. I wouldn't set a drink on here. So this side will have to be a little bit lower. All right, yeah, I think it is a little crooked. If you think this looks good, then leave a comment. Oh, that's sturdy, yeah, sturdy -ish. Don't say ish, there's no ish, it's sturdy. Wait a minute. I think that's probably close enough, huh? Good enough for government work. I think it was better than did. Oh, see that big split? We'll try. Oh, she's stuck. Oh, that's what we get for our money. Well, here's hoping. Oh man, I hope this doesn't split. Yeah, it's got a knot in it too. Let right. go beneath it. This is not ideal. We'll do better next time, boss. Nice All right, back at it again the next day. We're gonna get this brace. So we've got some fence staples. Okay, so I lost my audio. Basically what I'm using to hold the wire in place is some staples, some field fence staples, and some 14 gauge electric fence wire. It's not the best wire to choose, but it was the wire that I had. Essentially, you wanna tie the bottom of your corner to the top of the outside. Staple it in place. I stapled mine loosely so I could feed the wire through and get it to where I wanted it. I didn't slam the staple all the way in because then the wire would be trapped. And then you twist your wires together and secure whatever you're using to twist your wires together. I used a piece of rebar to the top of the horizontal on the H. So I cut my wire to an appropriate length, got it stapled to the top of the outside, again loosely into the bottom of the corner post loosely now i messed up twisting it together the first time i way over twisted it as you'll see here i used a pair of clines and i snapped my wire don't do it this way now i've got to remeasure and recut This time I decided to twist it together going up the wire. Use a short piece of rebar and then I figured out which way I had to twist it for it to lay on the H, the horizontal board, the way I wanted it to. I wanted it to be inside the fence. If I twisted it the other way, 
the pressure would make it want to unwind and then it would have sat on the outside. So I was a little nervous twisting. I didn't want to over twist it and break my wire again. So slowly twist it, check it. And you can kind of tell, kind of tell that the wire is going to get to the point of snapping. After you get it where you want it, you can use the same fence staple to secure that rebar in place. With this being done, the weight and pull pressure of that fence, especially if you pull it tight, it won't be able to lean forward and start to sag because as that H leans over to the outside, it's gonna be supported by that wire to the bottom of your actual corner post. So it makes it all as strong as the post being in the ground. Okay, no more recording today. It's time to work. This takes a lot longer when you're trying to record and show and explain and get different angles. I had no idea it would take this much longer with the camera to do this work than it would to just do it. I'm fighting the heat. It was 97 degrees today. I waited until the sun got behind the tree, so I was at least in the shade to do this. I need to get this done. Thank you guys for watching. Like I said, I had never done this before, so let me know what you would have done different if you would have done anything different and teach me so I could do it better next time. Also, there's a lady that subscribed and watching from Poland and another one from Canada. We're in Northern Indiana by Lake Michigan. Assuming you're not already from Indiana and you know us, let us know where you guys are at. It's kind of neat to see that somebody all the way in Poland and all the way in Canada is watching what we're doing and we very much appreciate it. Thanks guys.